we'll start the sample problems with number 5. Uh, they give us the numbers 0 and 7. They say to draw it on a number line. And uh, I think you've probably been doing number lines for a number of years, but uh, it's good to uh, get an idea of scale and, uh, and the magnitude of numbers compared to other numbers. So I'll just go ahead and throw this down. Let's draw that a little better. There we go. All right. So uh, one thing is don't get hung up on putting zero right in the middle. That doesn't have to happen. You can put zero here. And uh, for now, let's try and mark off a scale that uh, is consistent. So two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there is seven. All right. There we go. We did it. Twelve and eight, so negative twelve and eight. So we're gonna have to make sure that we uh, have make enough room for all this. So um, we'll make this be negative twelve, and that doesn't mean that this has to be twelve and this be zero. That doesn't have to be that way, like we talked about here. Zero can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be right in the middle. Um, if we know this is 8, that means we need 12 marks up to 0, somewhere in here, and then 8 up to here. Um, so, let's try and make it a bit. So this would be negative 11. So negative 11 being neg bigger than negative 12. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's it. Just a simple number line getting an idea for uh, negative numbers uh, like negative 4 would be bigger than negative 12 because it's further to the right on the number line, um, technically speaking. And just a matter of, of scale. When you make graphs and things like that, you want them to have a, a consistent scale. Um, so just some practice in that. And next, they give us a few numbers to look at. They give us 3, negative 5, negative 2.4, and 1. And they want us to decide whether these numbers are whole numbers, if they're integers, or they're uh, rational numbers. Um, well, it's kind of a funny question, because let's look at number 3. That's definitely a whole number, right? If we count things that uh, that make sense, we're going to count apples or oranges or cars or people or whatever. We would have a positive number of those things that uh, are tangible that we can touch. Um, so that's a whole number. But if we go back to our little chart here, whole numbers are part of the integers. So we could also say it's an integer, which those are part of the rational number. So we could say it's a rational number. But we're just narrowing it down as much as possible. The smallest set that this is a part of uh, would be the set of whole numbers. All right. So clearly this is a rational number, but it's also an integer, but it's not a whole number because it's a negative, and no negative number would be called a whole number, so we'll call this an integer. All right. This guy here, it's not a whole number, it's negative. It's not an integer, it's got a decimal, it's got a part of a number. Um, so this would be a rational number. It can be written as a fraction. It can be written as one integer divided by another integer. And this would be a whole number again, a number that's not a decimal at all, and it's not negative. It's a positive. It's a whole number. Uh, and then we write them from least to greatest. Okay, so we got the negatives would be the least, of course. Uh, and the one furthest to the left would be the most least. That doesn't make any sense. It would be the very leastest. The negative 5 would be furthest to the left, followed by negative 2.4. All right, then uh, we go by 0, and we get into the positive numbers. We get to 1, and then 3 would be the greatest number in that list. Okay, number 18. Negative 0.01. Negative one tenth. All right, so 
so we have a rational number here. We have, uh, again, a rational number. Here we have 0. 0 is a whole number. So we'll write whole number. And then negative 1 tenth, this is a negative. Uh, so it's not a whole number. It's a, a fraction. So it's not an integer. It's a rational number. Okay, and now from least to greatest. Um, so what's bigger, negative 0 0.01 or negative 1 tenth? We gotta kind of think of these as, as the same thing. So, so what is this position called? It's called the tenths position. If we had a one there, it'd be 1 tenth. And then as we move further to the right of the decimal, the smaller we get, uh, which is the opposite of to the left of the decimal. To the left of the decimal, as we move to the left, we get uh, that's that's incorrect. The further we get to the left, the bigger the number we get. The further we go to the right, the smaller the number we get. Um, this would be tenths. The next would be uh, ten times smaller than that. So this would be a one hundredth, and the next would be a thousandth, and so on. So this is one one hundredth, negative one one hundredth. This is negative one tenth. Um, so negative one tenth is uh, is a, a larger piece. Okay, so it would be further to the left on the number line. Right, so we'd have 0 here. We'd have negative 1 tenth here. And then a hundredth would be 1 tenth of 1 tenth. Right, so that would be like right there. Right, that'd be negative 1 one hundredth or negative 0 0.01. So negative 1 tenth is furthest to the left, which means it's actually the smallest. Next would be negative 0 0.01. Next would be 0, clearly, because now we're, we're going to cross from the negatives over to the positives. And the uh, positive 0 0.1 would be the largest number. OK. Um, and now we'll move on to number 23. A sum number A is equal to 6. And they want us to find negative a, or the opposite of a. Negative this thing. Well, if we put a negative in front of this number, 6, uh, then the opposite of positive 6 would be negative 6. Right. Now, the these symbols here, this is what we want to find, the absolute value of a, and that just basically means uh, just how far away is it from zero on the number line. And this will always be a positive representation. We'll always write the absolute value as a positive number. Okay, so the absolute value is always positive. So the absolute value of a, since a is six, the absolute value of six, how far away from zero is six? It's six away. Okay. By comparison, we'll look at uh, a different number, like. 25, negative 18. A is negative 18. So what's the opposite of A? What is the negative of A? We have a negative, negative number. The opposite of a negative number would be just the opposite side of 0. So here we have negative 18. The opposite of a number is just like mirrored over 0. If that's 0 there, this would be positive 18. So this is positive 18. Uh, the absolute value of a, the absolute value of negative 18, that would be how far away is 18, or how far away is negative 18 from 0? And just tell me that in a positive. Well, that's just positive 18. So the absolute values just turn everything positive. If it's positive, it stays positive. If it's negative, then it's positive. The absolute value is always positive. Alrighty. Uh, next, we deal with those if-then statements. 36, we're going to say, um, identify the hypothesis and the conclusion of the conditional statement. So it's just a, a bunch of vocab. And then we're going to decide whether or not the statement is true. So if this is our statement, if a number is negative, then the absolute value is negative. So let's just underline the hypothesis. What's the hypothesis? 
Well, the hypothesis is a number is negative. Okay. The conclusion would be uh, its absolute value is negative. Okay. So if this is, uh, is true, it's basically like an assumption, we're assuming there's a number and that it's negative, then the thing we conclude about that negative number is that its absolute value is negative. Now, is this true or is this false? Uh, well, it's it's definitely false because I can give you an, a counter example. So, uh, so let's take a negative number, negative three. Okay, so a number is negative. Is the absolute value of this number negative? Let's throw some absolute value about it or around it and think about it. Um, well, no, this is three. We just talked about absolute values; they're always positive. Um, so here's a counter example. It's a specific example of an instance where this is not true. Okay, but this one happens to always not be true because a, a negative number will never, well, an absolute value, excuse me, an absolute value will never be negative. An absolute value is always positive. Um, so this is a, an occasion where this is always a false statement. Um, but true and false can be kind of a, a funny thing sometimes. Let's look at a different statement. If a number is a whole number, then it is greater than 23. Um, well, uh, if a number is a whole number, what are we talking about? We're talking about 0, 1, 2, 3, and, and so on. Uh, well, 24 is a whole number, 25 is a whole number, uh, 27 is a whole number, a million is a whole number. Those are all bigger than 23. So. I just found some numbers that uh, are greater than 23, but we also know that the numbers 0 through 22 are all whole numbers as well, and they're not greater than 23. Um, so if I asked you, and I pressed you to, to tell me whether or not this statement was uh, true, or whether this statement was true or false, you would say, well, it's not true, it's not always true, but also it's not always false. Uh, so you might want to say, like, it's not necessarily true. but in this instance, what we have are true things, and then anything that's not absolutely true uh, is false. So uh, there is a counterexample to this. Is there's 22 counterexamples to this? Actually, there's 23 counterexamples to this, including zero. Um, so this statement would be false. So we could give a counterexample of the number seven. 7 is an example of a number that's a whole number, but it's not greater than 23. And we could, we could come up with a lot more examples. So this is ruled to be false. Okay, let's go on to 38. Kind of ran out of room over here, so I just put the, the symbol for a number. But if a number is an integer, then the number is rational is a rational number. Uh, so if a number is an integer, if we jump up here, if a number is an integer, then it's a rational number. Well, you can see all the integers. This green box represents all the integers. And that green box is inside this blue box, which represents all the rational numbers. So seeing as we know that, if a number is an integer inside that little uh, blue box, So if a number is a, a rational number, sorry, an integer, if a number is an integer, which is in that little blue box, or green box, then it's a rational number. Well, all the integers were inside that blue box, the rational numbers. So that's true. This is a true statement. Whenever you come across a number that's an integer, it will always be a rational number as well. Uh, that's just the, the nature of integers. Um, and that'll be it. That'll be all for this section. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.